All right, so welcome back. We've been using a lot of different materials. We started using pencil, colored pencil. We've used some markers. We've used some oil pastels. Now we're gonna move into chalk pastel. So there's a few things that I want you to know about chalk pastel before we get started. Um, the key to using chalk pastel successfully for me is to use it sparingly. I don't wanna use a lot of it because when I use a lot of the chalk pastel, um, the powder from the pastel gets all over the place and it can be hard to clean up. So I like to use light strokes and I like to use the chalk pastel sparingly. Another thing that we want to think about is also blending. Chalk pastel is a powdery substance, so it blends very well on paper. I like to use paper towel, and I like to do some blending with the pastel. For this project, we're going to create our own cubist abstract drawing, okay? So cubism is an art form um, or style of art that developed in the early 1900s. Pablo Picasso is an artist um, who is most known for creating cubist work. And there's one main thing that I like to think about when I'm looking at cubist work. For instance, Pablo Picasso, he would maybe paint a friend of his and he would use these geometric shapes to show different parts of his friend at different angles. So it's almost like you're looking at something in a different dimension. You're, you're creating a flat surface, but you're adding more than one dimension to that surface, okay? Now we're gonna simplify our cubist drawing um, a little bit and we're gonna focus on shapes, okay? I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. You're gonna be very successful and you're gonna do a good job, all right? All right, so for this project, there's gonna be just a few things that you're gonna to need to complete it. You're gonna need a piece of construction paper. If you're in my class, then you have a piece of construction paper that is a random color inside of your portfolio. You're gonna need your chalk pastels, at least four colors. Those colors can be random as well, no specific colors. And you're going to need yourself a pencil for the underdrawing, and you'll want a few napkins for blending and keeping your hands clean while you're working on the project. The first thing that we're going to do on our paper, this may sound kind of strange, but it will work, trust me. We're going to take our pencil and we're gonna write random T shapes all across our, our paper, filling up the paper from top to bottom. So just watch me following along. Follow along, you'll see what I mean. There's a T. Now I'm gonna bring a T over here. There's another one. I'm gonna bring a different T at a different angle. There's another T. Upside down T. I'm gonna cre cre keep creating T shapes all throughout the image, okay? I don't really want any open spaces, so I can shut those off just like that. I'm gonna create another T going up here, remembering to fill in any kind of open spaces. Here's a T here. There's a large T. I'm gonna just continue doing this throughout my paper until I get all the way completed, all right? Some shapes will be larger than others, some will be shorter, that's totally fine. This is gonna give us that cubist feel to this chalk pastel drawing. Fill in that shape, there we go. So essentially, all over my paper, I'm creating a bunch of T's, okay? Filling up that whole paper, just like so. There's no right or wrong way. You're just breaking that space up by creating those T shapes. Perfect. No ruler is needed. Just use your natural hand. Create those T's, make it your own, make it look like yours, and you will be totally fine. Looking good, I'm gonna grab a couple more here and maybe just one more T shape right here. Break that up a little bit. Perfect. Next step, now that I've created all those T's on my paper, I'm going to create some circles on my paper. I'm gonna do about three or four circles of different sizes. Now, you can use a found object, like a coffee cup, trace it and create your circle, or you can freehand it, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I'm gonna start with my first circle, just kinda right here, 
not in the center of the paper. I don't want it directly in the center, just a little bit off. I'm gonna create a smaller circle here. Just giving some balance, those uh, organic lines on top of those inorganic lines. Another one here, perfect. And then I'm gonna create one more smaller one just right here. Awesome. So now I have the base drawing for my project. I do see one little open space right here. I'm gonna close that. Now I'm ready to go. So when we begin to color in our drawings with our chalk pastels, there's a couple of things we wanna think about. We wanna think about line rhythm and color rhythm. We also wanna think about line movement. So I'm gonna choose one color at a time I'm going to trace that shape, shade a little bit into that shape. Then I'm going to move to a new color. And after I'm done doing this with all of my colors, I'm going to take my paper, my paper towel, and I'm going to do some blending. OK, so just watch me as I go. I'll start with this yellowish color that I have. You may have colors of paper different from me. You may have uh, oil, uh, chalk pastel colors different from me as well. That's totally fine. Just use what you have and you'll be surprised how it comes out. There's shape number one, I traced it. Now I'm lightly shading in that shape, going from dark to light. I'm not gonna shade it all in and I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna trace this shape here, just like so. Perfect. Shading that shape in. Can be a little sketchy because that paper towel will blend it together very well. I'm gonna continue doing this. Remember, your color of construction paper does not matter. Your color of chalk pastels does not matter. Use what you have, experiment, and um, you'll like what you end up coming up with. This project is pretty cool once you're done. And again, if you notice, I am not uh, moving quickly with this chalk pastel. I'm taking my time. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I don't want to get this chalk pastel all over the place. I want to keep my area clean. I want to keep my hands as clean as possible. I don't want to smudge a lot. I'm going to try my best not to touch the paper and not to get a bunch of chalk everywhere, okay? Control in this point is better than just kind of doing whatever you want because you're gonna have a cleaner environment and I think your drawing is gonna come out a lot more successful than if you just started to really scribble hard and get the chalk all over the place. So I'm just gonna continue moving around, putting those yellow colors in, looking good. I wanna keep those colors as separate as possible. Don't want them right beside each other. If I can avoid colors not being completely side by side, then I feel like I'm gonna have a pretty successful drawing. I'm getting to the point where I'm just about ready to move on to another color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one more shape here, and I'm gonna to move to that next color. And if you see, I've got some rhythm going on because the colors are bouncing back and forth, up and down the paper, making the eye move all around it, instead of being concentrated in one specific place. I'm gonna move on to this orangish color that I have. You might think orange on orange will not work, but it does. That chalk pastel goes very well with this construction paper. It'll go right on top of it. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just quickly going in there, tracing those shapes, shading a little bit, and I'm gonna have some good success here. Looking good. Do a little blend in there. Blending in with the paper at least. Fading out from that darker color to that lighter color. Again, I am not pressing hard because I don't want this chalk to go all over the place. Keep our areas clean. We'll, we'll be more productive by keeping those areas that we're working on clean because we'll spend less time cleaning and wiping it off of us. Looking good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do one more shape, then I'm gonna to move to a new color. Right here, this large shape. Back and forth. Remembering that I'm gonna blend once I'm all done with this. 
I'm gonna move on to my next color. This time I'm gonna go ahead and pick that green since I have that one. Remember our colors are random. We're going to do our best with the colors that we have available, okay? If you have your own extra pack of pastels, then you know you can pick whatever colors you want. But having random colors, you know, that presents its own challenge, you know, because they may be colors that you don't like necessarily. However, you know, if you keep working the drawing, you may end up liking it. Continuously tracing. Wonderful. Got a nice rhythm going on. Line movement. I'm gonna move on to my yellow ochre color. That's what this is called. Works well for creating more bronze skin tones. It's almost like a mixture between a yellow and a brown. You may have that color, you may not. Totally fine. Just use what you have, at least four colors. nearing completion I'm gonna go ahead and stop there I'm not gonna finish the whole page but I definitely want you to fill out each shape from top to bottom but for time purposes we're gonna go ahead and move on to the blending process so what you do when you're blending you take that paper towel I like to just kind of wrap it around my finger like this just like to have it wrapped in my finger okay once I have it wrapped into my finger, I like to go inside of the colors and just lightly just push them around. Slightly just blend them and push them around. The edges, the inside, you see how easy that moves around and blends? That's why you don't really have to use a lot of chalk for this project, okay? I wanna go one color at a time before I move on to my next color. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on into another color to blend. I'm gonna start blending my green. So I'm gonna just use the same paper towel. I'm gonna to find a new spot and I'm gonna blend with that paper towel. I prefer to blend with the paper towel as opposed to my fingers, just because I wanna to try to make a minimal mess for myself. Also, I notice when I've tried to blend chalk pastel with my finger, Sometimes it kind of feels like I overblend my finger and it feels funny with my skin. It might irritate my skin a little bit. So I choose to go ahead and just use a paper towel very softly and uh, blend those colors. Now I'm gonna go on to my reddish color here. Blend those up. Same process. I want my paper towel to be clean so the colors don't get muddy. Just working around that chalk. So, you know, if it's your first time and it's taking you some time to do it, don't worry, don't stress yourself. You'll get there. As long as you work hard, you're gonna be successful. You will be successful. Finishing all those red areas up, looking good. Once you're completed with your chalk pastel project, this is what it should look like, all right? It should look similar to this. Of course, you had a random piece of construction paper, random color, you had random chalk pastel colors, and you made it happen. The last thing that I want you to do before you complete your project is I want you to take all of those colors that you used, and I want you to randomly trace the shapes that you created with those colors. You see how I traced over everything? What happened there is I made everything pop out, all the colors popped out even more, just by tracing around those random shapes. After that, go ahead and take those colors and make random rhythm lines throughout your image, okay? You see how I have all these random image lines going through my image? Two lines in a row, three lines in a row, just quickly through the image. That's creating a sense of rhythm and movement inside of our chalk pastel. So I know you're gonna do a great job with this project. You've been improving your art skills since we started um, with all of these projects. You've gotten better and better each week, and now you're gonna be able to take these tools and create your own pieces of art in the future. Continue working hard, you're doing a great job, you're improving. I can't wait to see what you do now and in the future as well. Thank you.